What is going on guys, DBG here and we got some mystery cards. Not gonna lie, it's maybe the only drop that is less hyped than um, idols, but I'm living in hope. I'm sitting here living in hope that just maybe, just maybe we go and see um, a decent batch or something big coming. Maybe Spotlight Sims, just maybe. I know, I know, it's probably just hope for no reason. But man, we gotta believe. We gotta believe 2K are gonna revive this mode because, again, the only people with the power to revive this mode are 2K because the only reason anyone plays this mode is for content. But, um, yeah, anyway. So, before we get onto it, if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We are less than two, well, we're just over two and a half thousand subscribers away from hitting a quarter of a million. We're trying to hit that by the end of the month, and it's going to be very, very close. 250 a day. We've been on like 100 the last three or four days, so it's going to be very, very close. But you never know. We might just do it. We might just do it, which would be absolutely incredible. But, um, yeah, so, Dennis Smith Jr. is the first player in these mystery packs. So, half showtime, half range, half... Okay, he could be interesting. Height, 6'2 with a 6'3 wingspan. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's much, but he might be all right. There's no guarantee that that's bad, but he is short. He is very short. Um, No steady slash blinders. 93 ball, 95 driving dunk, 93 three ball. Okay, I don't know if this release is nice or not. I don't know if this release is nice or not at all. Like, I have absolutely, absolutely no idea whether 113 is going to be a good release. But he's got quick dribble style, pro 2, pro 5 behind the back. I mean, he's going to be... I mean, he's not going to be good, is he? And then can we just say that? That, like, he's... He's not going to be unusable, I guess. But he, he's not going to be good. He's not going to be good at all. Like, if you're a Dennis Smith... Again, if you're a Dennis Smith Jr. fan, he's going to be good enough that you're not going to lose game having him, but he's not going to be great. But, lads, Katino Mobley. If you guys know how cash Katino Mobley was in his Amethyst, this dude right here, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter to your silver range, doesn't matter to your steady. He greened everything. Now let's see what they did to this Katina Mobley here. Let's see what they did to him. So 94 speed, 96 three ball. Let's see what type of a driving dunk they gave him. 85, that's fine. 6'4 with 6'7 wingspan. Please, please 2K. Make him curry. Let's go! He's got the same release on very quick. Lads, we've got him. We've got a decent point guard. We've got a decent diamond card in mystery. All right, saying all the diamonds of actually no, Dimwitty was good. He's gonna be a little bit expensive for what he is. He's gonna be a little bit expensive, but he's gonna be chicken man. I'm telling you guys, he might like if if there's a stage where there's like weird super packs and he goes down to like three kmt. I'm telling you guys, this might be one of those root, one of those budget beasts. It might be one of those budget beasts in game. But again, like, this is one of those years where budget players don't mean nearly as much as they did last year. Because, obviously, um, they meant a lot more last year. Because going 12-0 and 0 is a lot easier than going, like, 68-0. and 0. And if you're going if you're going 68-0 and 0 by, like, game 50, you're going to have enough MT to have a great team. And the budget squads have kind of just lost their... They've kind of just lost their hype because, well, um, 2K have just made Rune Unlimited. Um... But yeah, so Katino Mobley is going to be good. He's going to be good. He's a card that I think could be very, very good. I wish he had blinders. If he had blinders, I mean, I'm not, I don't quite think he would, but there, you could debate him in over Darren Williams if he had half blinders. But no, he's going to be really good on current gen. That release is so cash. And we got John Wall. Or say not John Wall, Bars Dio. Bars Dio. Man, my favorite player of all time. My favorite player of all time. The most un one of the most underrated defenders in NBA history. People talk about the 2013 NBA Finals, Kawhi Leonard locking down LeBron James or holding LeBron James. Heck, Boris Diaw guarded LeBron James half of the time in that series. The 20, the guy who was 
in my opinion, the true finals MVP of 2014. One, one all in the series. The Spurs insert Boris Diaw into the starting lineup. It ends up being the most lopsided NBA finals in history. Boris Diaw, I think, I'm pretty sure he, did he have the highest plus minus in NBA, his, in NBA finals history? Like, it was a joke. Boris Diaw. I'm telling you. Was he the best? That Spurs team was the whole team, but I mean, when we're talking about the most valuable player, I think... Going from two unbelievable, going from a blowout game or a comfortable game two loss, a unbelievably tight game one win, to three blowout wins. By after putting this guy into the starting lineup with the highest plus minus, yeah, I, I'm I'm telling you, I'm still to this day. But to be fair, the 2014 Finals MVP was again, it was one of those finals where it's just this, if you gave if you give a team MVP, that was just team basketball. And for anyone who's a fan of team basketball, my God, that final was. Watching that Spurs team was like poetry in motion. I wish. I just wish. If they had a one in 2013 and then one in 2014. And I reckon if they had to beat the Clippers. If they didn't lose in game seven to the Clippers in 2015. Who choked against the Rockets. I think the Spurs probably win three titles. Spurs probably beat the Warriors in 2015. Obviously not from 2016 onwards. But man. Bars the, uh, the guy could change the game without taking a shot. He's just positioning. He just drifted into the right positions all the time. He wasn't quick laterally, but he could still read the offensive players who's got here on defense. That is my um, my love poem for Boris Diaw finished. But oh, he's got range extender clamps. Quick first step, unpluckable. 93 lateral quickness. I wish he had higher drive. No, but that's not the biggest deal in the world. He has a pro three behind the back. Please make him curry. Curry, quick dribble stop. Galilari, very quick pro three behind the back. Jesus, Lord. He's a god tier. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! He is ridiculous! He is ridiculous in game, lads. He's got every key badge Hall of Fame. He's got the best release in the game. One well, of the best catch and shoot release in the game. I'm very quick. One of the best uppers in the game. He's got the pro, best find in the back in the game, Curry slide, and the quick dribble style. Alright, he might be in for Lamelo. He might be. He might be a uh, in for Lamelo ball. He's so good. He's like, see, he's like way better, um, Della Shrimp, except he doesn't have steady for you guys in current gen. Oh man, he's... He's a beast. He's a beast. And considering he's my favorite player of all time, favorite NBA player of all time, I might actually put Boris Dio into uh, into my squad. Arvita Sabonis. 7-3 with 80 speed? All right. 94-3 ball. Half range extender. Eight equip basically 86 ball handle. Thankfully, he doesn't have dribble six. Base eight. I'm very quick. He's going to be a good catch and shoot player. He's going to be a... He's going to be a really, really good center. Like, if you want an interior center, I mean, Diaz, pro or not Diaz, Simone's probably the best because he's got the shooting. He's got a lot more speed than a taco fall. He's not quite got the length, but he's got all, he's only two inches shorter. His release is almost as good as tacos. He's going to be a way better shooter, obviously. Yes, yeah, a bonus is, he's not the best card in this set, but he's a very, very solid center. It depends on what style you want to play. Like again, if you're current gen, if you're speed, if you're playing at speed glitching cream or wilt, you're gonna struggle. I will say that much. But if you're playing next gen, Sabonis could be a really, really good center. So, of all of the new players that came out today, I don't think any of them are awful. I don't think any of these are awful, to be honest. Sabonis, I wouldn't use him on current gen because again, we live in a it's cream and wilt's world. It's those guys are just too fast. He's going to be good on next gen. Katino Mobley, again, could be a really nice budget player on current gen, depending on the way... Actually, his release is incredible. He's going to be an elite budget player on next gen if he's 12k or less. Dennis Smith Jr., I mean, use him if you're a Dennis Smith Jr. fan. He's not great. And then Boris Diaw, I mean, this is a top 17, 18 card in the game. Why did I pick 17? He's a top 20 card in the game. And there's no doubt about that. Without question, a top 20 card in the game. If he's around 30, 40k, that's a... I'm telling you, that's a steal. He's better than half the Dark Matters in the game. Like, he's... 
if you want to compare him to Dark Matter Zion Williamson. Like, Zion's got a little bit better speed. Boris Diaz got better height. He got 183 total stats. A lot of quickness, almost the same. Speed, yeah, Zion's better, but Boris Diaz taller. Or Zion's faster, but Boris Diaz taller. So on next gen, Boris Diaz is going to feel faster. Better SIGs, better release for Boris Diaz. Range extender. And in terms, like, dunking is the one thing Zion really has over him. It's going to be noticed, but I'm telling you, in-game, they're going to be very, very comparable. So, yeah, that is pretty much it. It's actually a really, really good, really good batch of mystery cards. So, anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.